Hey everyone, my name is Olaf, and today I will show you how to make this exact animation in Blender. You are going to learn how to model it, how to animate it, and then how to add the materials and the lighting. As always, it will be quick and easy, so uh, let's get started. Okay, so we are going to start off by switching from Blend Render to Cycles Render for better shading, and then click X to delete the default cube. Then click Shift A, and add a UV sphere, which will be the bottom of the cannon and then click S, then set to scale it on the set axis. And then the next step is to add the floor. So uh, left click below the uh, sphere, and then click Shift A, and add a plane. And then click S to scale it up, and then left click to confirm the scale. Then we can select the uh, sphere, and then go into the modifiers, add modifier, and add a subdivision surface modifier to increase the amount of uh, polygons. And then to grab it on the set axis, click G, then set. And then I will add a cube, so click Shift A and add a cube. Then click S, then set to scale it on the set axis. And then left click to confirm. And then click G, then set to grab it on the set axis. And this will be the platform for the uh, cannon. And then click G, then set to grab this one on the set axis as well. Okay. And then we can add the uh, top of the cannon. So click Shift A and add a cylinder. And then click Numpad 3 to go to the side view. And then click R, X, then 90 to rotate the cylinder 90 degrees on the set axis. And after we grab it on the set axis, we click S to scale it down once again. So uh, the next step is to uh, grab it downwards on the set axis. And then we will scale it on the y-axis. So click S, then Y to scale it on the y-axis. And then click S to scale it down a bit. And then click G to grab it once again. And now it's time to start modeling the cannon itself. So uh, let's go into edit mode. And then select the two faces. Go into face select. And then hold in shift while you select the other one to select multiple faces. And then click N and increase the increase value to 1. And when we now add the subdivision surface modifier, we will only subdivide the uh, sides of the cylinder, which is important to keep the barrel straight. So uh, select the front face, and then click E, left click, then click S to scale the extrusion down, then click E, then Y to extrude uh, the uh, new extrusion on the Y axis. And then left click to confirm the location, then click G, then Y once again to grab it on the y-axis and now we select the back part and click ctrl b and when you use the uh, mouse wheel you get additional edges so the back is smoother with the bevel and then left click to confirm and now we click a to deselect everything and then select the two rings of edges in the front of the barrel so hold in shift and alt to select them and then click ctrl b to add the bevel and make sure to add additional ones by using the mouse wheel once again. Okay, so now we have the basic shape of the cannon, so click tab to go back to object mode, and then click R, then X to rotate it on the X axis, and then click G, then set to grab it on the set axis. And as you can see, we now have the basic shape of the cannon as you saw in the beginning of the tutorial. So let's click G, then set to grab them on the set axis closer to the platform, and then I think I will rotate the barrel back to the original rotation so that we can add the emitter for the uh, cannon balls. So select it and then set the X rotation back to 90 degrees. In my opinion, this part is actually really simple. So what you do is click Shift S to move the through the cursor to the center of the object. And then click Shift A and add a plane. And then click R, X, then 90 to rotate it 90 degrees on the X axis. And then click S and scale it down to a very small plane. And then you hold in Shift and select the barrel. And then click Ctrl P to set the plane parent to the barrel so that the uh, particles follow the rotation of the uh, barrel. And then let's go into the particle settings and click New. And then change the number to 10 for now. And then change the end to 250. 
and then you change the lifetime to uh, a very high number because we don't want the cannonballs to disappear. And then let's scroll down and uh, increase the emitter object value on the z-axis, which basically means the speed of the emission of the cannonballs, which is the speed of the cannonballs, basically. So let's set it to 33, so that you get the same value as me. And now when we play the animation, you will see that the cannonballs, or the uh, particles that will turn into uh, cannonballs later on, have gravity as well, which is great. So let's pause the animation. And before we add the cannonballs, let's just uh, rotate the barrel on the x-axis. So click R, then X, to rotate it on the x-axis. And when we play the animation, we can't really see the particles. So now it's time to start adding the cannonballs. And it's very simple. So let's just grab it a little bit on the z-axis first. And then click Shift A and add a UV sphere, which will become the cannonball. And then go into the modifiers, add modifier, and add a subdivision surface modifier to increase the amount of polygons. And then click S to scale it down. And let's just move it away a bit. And then select the particle emitter. And then click object down in the render and select the sphere 001. And now when we play the animation, you will see tiny spheres. So we need to increase the size until it's large enough. Now the point of this tutorial is obviously not to make the most realistic cannon, so I just try to make it look cool and cartoonish. So let's just make sure the cannonball fits inside the barrel, but uh, still has a decent size. So when we play the animation, you see the uh, cannon shooting, and I think it looks great. Now before we continue with this tutorial, let's just make a save. I'm going to call the uh, file Canon Toots for tutorial and then click enter to save and you can save wherever you want on the computer. And now the next step of the tutorial is to add the lighting and the materials. So let's select the lamp, then go into the lamp settings, turn it into a sun, ch change the size to 1 and then click use nodes. And increase the strength to 7 to make the light stronger and then click G to grab the sun and then R to rotate it. And uh, when you click Shift Set, you will see what it looks like in rendered view. And uh, also, if you have a GPU, make sure to use it as the device. If not, you can still just use the CPU. Okay, so now it's time to add the materials. So uh, click New, and then change it from Diffuse to Glossy. And then we'll change the roughness to 0.2. And then for the color, I'm going to make it blue, but you can obviously add whatever color you want for the cannon. I think the color I will uh, add is a kind of uh, dark bluish color, which I think looks great in the final render. So when you click Shift Set, you will see what it looks like. And I will add the same material for the uh, two other objects of the cannon. So select it and then add the material. And I think I will move the cannon a little bit closer to the platform. So hold and shift, select both of them, and click G, and then set to grab them on the set axis. Okay, so now I think it's time to add the material for the cannonball. And it's a very simple material, so change it from diffuse to glossy, and then change the roughness to 0.1. And then for the color, I will add a black color, or a kind of a dark grayish. So uh, we now have the uh, materials for the cannon and the uh, cannonball. So let's add a material for the floor as well. So just uh, select it and then add a new material. And I'll just use a basic diffuse white material. Now I like to make the background color a little bit dark. So let's go into the background or the world settings and then make it a little bit darker because I think the shadows look a bit better when it's a dark background. Okay, so let's go into the uh, edit mode of the uh, plane and then select the two edges on the side and then click E to extrude. And we will add these walls, both because it looks better in the final render, but also because we then can showcase the physics of the cannonballs that we will add later. So uh, now let's see through the camera. So click number zero to see through the camera 
and then click Shift F to use the fly cam and then move around with W, A, S and D just like in a video game. And then select the cannonball and click M and move it to another layer so that we can't see the uh, like the source cannonball in the final render. I want the floor to be a bit wider as well so uh, select the uh, floor and then make it even wider so that we can't really see the uh, transition from the floor to the walls. Okay, so now it's time to uh, test out the cannon and add physics. But as you can see, the cannonballs go straight through the walls. So let's select the cannonball first and add the collision physics. So select collision physics. And then we need to select the walls or the floor. And then add the collision physics. And when we now play the animation once again, you will see that the cannonballs bounce off the walls which is what we want. So uh, now when we rotate it on the z-axis, you see that it interacts with uh, all of the parts of the other object. And that is what we're going to animate now when we go back to one of the first frames. Let's uh, set the rotation on the z-axis back to zero and then start uh, animating and keyframing the animation. So let's uh, pause it here and then click I to keyframe the rotation and then move forward in time maybe to 190 and I click R then set to rotate it on the z-axis and then left click to confirm the rotation on the z-axis and I click I to keyframe and then we will rotate it back to the original position with the zero degrees rotation on the z-axis and then click I to keyframe once again so now we have everything set up. We have the model of the cannon, we have the lighting and materials, and we have the animation and the keyframes. So uh, now it's time to go into the render settings. So click the camera icon, increase the resolution quality to 100%, set the sampling to about maybe 300, depending on how fast your computer is. If you have a GPU, make sure to go into performance and increase the tiles to around 500. If not, just keep them at 64. And for the output, which is where we save the animation, I'll make a new folder and call it Canon and uh, select the folder and then give the animation a name. And it will be saved as PNG images. So uh, let's make a test render first in one of the frames where you can see the cannonball. And uh, then you will see how long it takes to render each frame before you start rendering the whole animation, which I think is useful. So it took me about one minute. By multiplying the render time for the one frame by 250, you will know how long it takes to render out the whole animation. So uh, click animation, and we will start rendering out the whole animation. And that's it for this tutorial. I post new tutorials every single week, so make sure to subscribe. And if you want to get even deeper into Blender, make sure to get my Blender tank course and the link will be below.